So one important feature of ActionScript 3 that I really wanted to be certain to cover is the ability to add scripts to frames dynamically through code. Now, as you get better with ActionScript 3 and, and hopefully start to feel more comfortable working with class files and the document class and symbol linkages and so forth, you'll start to realize that uh, the benefits of moving more and more of your code out of your FLA makes it much easier to work with, much easier to maintain, uh, particularly as you grow into larger and more complex projects. But the thing with the document class is that by default, um, with uh, class files, you can only write code on frame one of a movie clip. So remember with the document class, the constructor is run on frame one. So what if you wanted to run something on frame 2 or frame 3? Uh, you can't really just do that in the class file. So fortunately, there's this undocumented function called add frame script. And add frame script allows you to add code to any frame of any movie clip. Now, just a few notes on add frame script before we get into a sample of using it. First, it is undocumented. Now, sometimes this might give you cause for concern before using it. Will this be supported in future versions? Uh, but I uh, understand just from some personal research and, and talks with some colleagues that this is um, definitely, you know, a stable method. It's part of uh, it's part of how Adobe uses ActionScript. So uh, it looks very likely that it'll remain in the language. Now, one thing that's a little weird with it is that the frame numbering is zero based. So if you wanted to add a script to frame 1, you'd pass 0 as the argument. Also, the assigned function, uh, when you add a frame script, it's not like adding an event listener. So the function that you're going to call is not called as a callback. So there's no event argument. There's no parameter at all. Um, and there's no equivalent in ActionScript 1 or 2. This is one of those things that really is only possible uh, to execute this way in ActionScript 3. So here's a really simple example. In this example we have a movie clip called MC1 and we're going to add a frame script to frame 5 of MC1. Remember this is zero based so 4 means frame 5. And when we run frame 5 of MC1, we're going to call some function. And in some function, we run a trace statement. In this case, I'm running on frame 5 of MC1. So I'm going to, in Flash, create a new FLA. And then I am going to um, draw. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. Uh, I'll, I'll remove the stroke and uh, just draw a rectangle. I'll select it, hit F8 to convert it to a symbol, and I'll convert it to a movie clip. Hit Enter. So now uh, with the selection tool, I'll double click it to edit it in place. And then I'll add a, um, I'll add a keyframe. I'm um, sorry, a blank keyframe on frame 15. Sorry, frame 14. Let me drag that out to 15. And here I will draw an oval. And then I'll right click on frame 2 and create a shape tween. So if I scrub this timeline, I made a quick little animation. Okay? But if I just test this FLA, you'll see that it loops because by default, right, um, by default, movie clips loop in ActionScript. So I'm going to close this out. I'll return to the main timeline and I'm going to insert a new layer. And then I'm, I want to work with the actions of this layer. So let me pin my script. And before I can code uh, to control this movie clip, of course, I need to give this movie clip an instance name. So I will select it, and in the Properties panel, I'll give it the instance name MC1. So here in the Layers, uh, Layer 2 in the Actions panel, I will say MC1.addFrameScript. And let's say we want to add it to frame 5. So I'll type in 4, and then... Um, uh, I will run a function called sumfn, sum function. 
So then I need to define some function. So that when I hear frame 5 on MC1, I'm going to run some function, some fn. And that's going to trace out the current frame of that movie clip. So let's test this movie. And you'll see, since the movie clip is looping, every time it hits frame 5, I'm getting the trace statement. So if I wanted to actually stop MC1 uh, when it hit frame 5, I would say MC1 stop. And so now it hits frame 5, it stops, it runs the trace statement once, and because it's stopped, it's not looping anymore, so I'm not getting any more traces. So this is how you can control um, your timelines. Uh, you can apply code dynamically to them through other code.